Welcome. I'm going to move my VTuber over here. There he is. I was, uh, I was in a chat yesterday uh, for Lightbox. They have uh, one just for the exhibitors. I saw like one person sitting in there alone. So I was like, I'm going to pop in there and say hi to them. They were awesome. And uh, it, was, it was super cool. And then Bobby popped in and he was showing off his new YouTuber setup. He's like, look, I've got all these TikTok lights. I'm like, hell yeah, dude, you're looking good. And I was like, you want to see my studio setup? And I brought up this guy. And he's like, yo, what, the, what are you doing? <laughs> he's like, that guy does not match your voice at all. I'm like, I know. I know. I think it's that's like part of the thing. So, uh, yeah, I, the the reactions to this continue to grow. I might. I uh, we were talking a little bit this morning. Dustin and I were talking a little bit this morning about me maybe popping in and like cleaning this guy up a little bit more. But also the other thing I want to do is like um, I'm thinking about doing the chibi version of him and maybe having like a weirder, less detailed version to have on screen. Also, maybe we'll give that a shot. See if that's a little less off putting. Uh, I gotta give some shout outs here. Thank you so much for the T1. Uh, Ketatonic Cox, uh, Atra Art, and I, I know Leah. And then I don't remember if I got you when you, uh, uh, Double John. Double John subbed during the Friday event, and that was awesome. And then so thank you for everybody who has been subbing recently. I had no expectations on what the subs were gonna be like here. Um, and there wasn't, we haven't even put up like a sub goal. We talked about, we. oh wait, now we have a sub goal up on the thing now. This is our new sub goal. Dustin just added it. Twitch was like, why don't you add that? And then there was also something about a Prime bot. I don't know what Prime bot is. Like, if you guys already have Prime, I'll take the Prime sub. It's free for you if you already have Amazon Prime for whatever reason, because you really love watching the boys on Amazon Prime video the best named video network on the internet. Um, so yeah, if you got those prime subs, we, we, we take those here. And uh, yeah, that's, um, we, we've, we were just talking today about what we're gonna do as far as like maybe having some paid classes around here that I'm gonna try to launch those maybe next week, the first small round. So keep an eye out if you're interested in that sort of thing. I know some people have been talking about it. Um, I'm gonna do a study today I got this study up here that I, there's a series of photos that I found on Pinterest that I absolutely love of these Japanese models who are striking these awesome underwater poses. I actually ended up using them for one of my paintings. Maybe I'll show it at some point, which one it was, but like, um, I, I love these dynamic poses that are completely unmoored from gravity. I think these are probably some of the most inspiring Angelarium-like poses for me. And so I, one of them slips into the reference pile it's on the Today is the Day channel. If you go on the Discord, I'm gonna maybe attempt to go on the Discord and see if that, let me see. Do, 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 There it is. Um, today is the day I've got, I paired it back down to just like one figurative piece and one environmental piece. This is the first year, uh, I mean, this is the first one where I've done like a full on urban scene. I was looking up some urban scenes because people were asking about that a little bit. So I decided to throw some of them in the mix. And then we've also got one of Jake's uh, brand new mood boards. So we're doing the mood board. We're going to be doing the mood board thing all week. Uh, he's got a small pile of them for me. So I'm going to be feeding those out one at a time. If you want to do work from your imagination, but you're looking for a starting point, go ahead and use uh, the mini mood boards that Jake has been making. Um, ba -ba -ba. Other front matter. I'll probably should announce stuff at the end of the stream instead of at the beginning because then like the most people are here. It's probably the best idea, but who cares? We're not here for efficiency. We're here for consistency. And um, I'm pretty proud of the consistency that we've had so far. Like I just rounded the horn on the first month for, um, for Twitch. We got our like, they gave me a PDF giving me all my statistics. They said, your numbers aren't high enough. Get those numbies up, bud. And so that's why we got a subscriber. <laughs> that's why we have a subscriber count up now. Uh, announced at beginning and end. Yeah, that's a good idea. We can do that. So uh, I'm gonna make a new document here. Do my five by seven at 300 DPI. I've got hotkey set up. Oh. I finished my painting this morning. My uh, my strength painting, strength tarot. 
strength painting. Uh, the strength tarot piece. And so I have it posted up on angelarium.net. It's the first painting I've finished in the last couple weeks. Uh, it was a challenging one, and uh, I'm really proud of it. So let's see, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Again, I wanna try to like focus on, instead of reproducing the JPEG like grid in a grid-like way, I wanna continue my trend of trying to do a little bit of drawing with it, where I create a little bit of a, a drawing and really focus on the structure of the figure and try to get like the line of action and the, and like the three-dimensional structure of the, of the figure down and then paint it up in my own way on top of that like looser drawing. I'm hoping that that's going to give me more like of a, of a clearer sense of what's what I'm really looking at. I don't really care if it's a bunch of like wiggling lines of like, you know, you can see, oh, if I just follow the edge of this shadow and I make this wiggling little, like it's like the edge of a map. If I can just make that shape wiggle back and forth and seesaw back and forth exactly at the perfect rhythm, I can reproduce this highlight. But like, that's A, not teaching me very much, and B, it's like this sort of impossible task. Like, how do you break everything down into like perfect two-dimensional forms? Like, that's not the way that we think of things when we look at them. We don't see a pattern of lighter and darker pixels. We see a, a dancer posed underwater. And we see like the three-dimensional structure of the way that the we know that there's a shoulder here behind the form, even though the shoulder is like not being shown. There's parts about this. We're only seeing this little sliver of the arm and not even a clear edge as to where it overlaps in the body. And yet we still know that it's there because our brains are thinking in 3D, even if we like don't always feel like we have access to it. And so for me, like when I'm drawing in my sketchbook, the way that I'm working is trying to build out like a three-dimensional form. And um, in my studies, I haven't been doing that so much. So it's like, I've been talking about this for the last week, I think. And um, I'm gonna keep talking about it as, as this is my focus. As I've been doing these, like the focus keeps changing. Like um, I keep uh, thinking about one thing and then you know, focusing on that and trying to feel like I get some level of comfort with it and then later try to like build on something else. And uh, progressively, I feel like I'm building my way towards the skill set that I've been after when it comes to doing these things. So it's really important for me to capture this like flexing, this like there's a flexing that's happening in the torso you can see that there's like this fairly straight plane like through the hips and the abdomen here. And then it curves back over this way. And so we have this flex that goes all the way through the spine and all the way down into the toe. That's just like this perfect, cool, clear line of action. That's great. Like we just, we can see this, this like flex across the body. And that's like, that's the point where things are either going to be a success or failure in here is if I can get that feeling of um, motion to be happening in my own piece. So what are you guys up to? I feel like every time I go live, everyone, everyone gets like kind of quiet. <laughs> Worried about saying something dumb on camera. They're like, you can help, you can have all that for yourself, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody needs that. Nobody needs that kind of static, right? <laughs> and being tired. So um so the, the the challenge for this week that we have on the board is the fairy tale with twists. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get Sean Murray in here to um, take a look at these with us. I also was thinking about, um, you know, Sarah was sending out some, Sarah Frazetta, who joined us this last Friday to take a look at all the entries. She, uh, she was sending out um, some goodies out to everyone and she wanted to recognize a few people for their, uh, 
like exceptional contribution to the challenge, but then, you know, recognizing everybody by giving away some free stuff. Um, and I, at the very least, want to like have some kind of community recognition that's happening along with these challenges going forwards, because I thought that was really cool. And uh, I want there to be more feel good moments for people who are part spending time to participate in these challenges. Um, and so I'm thinking we might have like a badge or something that we give away to a handful of people on Friday events to recognize who's putting forth an exceptional effort. Ooh, what is this? Mitsu Mania gifting five tier one subs? That's exceptionally generous. Thank you so much. We're gonna hit this, uh, we're gonna hit this, uh, this subscriber goal fast, I think, the way that you guys have been. been extra generous with us. All right. I still haven't figured out how to change my brush tip on the eraser. I gotta do that one of these streams. All right. So yeah, um, I don't think we're gonna do uh, the ch weekly challenges as a contest. I, I don't really wanna make a contest where there's like winners and losers. I certainly, I want, it's like, we are always trying to get people who are uh, novices at art to throw their hat in and participate and like join the community in these like big public activities. And so I don't wanna turn it into this thing where it feels like there's an elite few people that are good at art and everybody else is bad at it. I, I want it to feel like we're all kind of in this together. And so I really want the recognition that comes with uh, the Friday challenges to like uh, follow that. And so, um, you know, it's not gonna be winners, but I do wanna have some recognition that goes out. And we are also looking at like some of the, some of you people have been really generous with your time and attention on the critique channel as well and on the resources channel. So like if, if we see anybody that's like really putting out like a, an awesome effort on the community. Like I uh, wanna start being able to add recognition for that. So we're gonna make a roll for that. Uh, I wanted to run some, before I did it, I could have done it this morning without you, but I wanted to ask some opinions about how we're going to name this roll. Because like, I was just gonna make a roll that was like goat themed and say that people oh. who were doing it were yes. goated. Uh, partially in honor of Jay, our, our you know resident goat bro, mm. and uh, I. But I'm worried that maybe as a slang term, it's it's not going to stand the test of time, and that we are just going to be, it's going to be like having a fucking YOLO badge or whatever, whatever like slang poorly aged slang term that people are like cringing at nowadays. Like, I mean, uh, do you think it'd be too weird to say that people who are doing a good job around here are goaded? No. No, not too weird. Well, I, I guess you got a little bit of bias, right? No, like genuinely though, like goaded has already like stood the test of time. It's just like it's been around it's for funny. for months. <laughs> no, it's not. dude, it's been around. I know, for, like, I know. It's and and like even when it's cringy, it's still kind of funny. So like whatever. Okay. Yo, well, those genuinely cringy. I don't want to hear that ever. Goaded is like <laughs> that's funny, you know. Um. Is any okay? Any other ideas on things we? Can, I was like thinking like maybe we call people like Rainbow Warriors or whatever. <laughs> Something but else. Also, I just throw caution to the wind that like even when you are just making or like highlighting people who were exemplary in the contest or not the contest, the just like the challenge, it's still going to come off as like a winner versus loser <laughs> thing. I know to a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just, uh, there's some really, I have some examples from um, the past, like communities I've participated in the past that like did a good job versus a bad job with this sort of thing. And so I have opinions about this built in. And it was just like the way Sarah was wanting to honor some people and their reaction to it reminded me of some of the best examples of that. And so I was like, okay, well, I know it's like, there's going to be the sense that some people are like the winners and like, that's just the way we're wired. But I do want to, um, I do think it's possible to make it not bad. I think there's a way I of mean, making it good. Cause it, it already was good. I like, I, I thought that the way it worked where Sarah wanted to like honor people 
was really good, and I thought her choices were great. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. I'm just saying, like, it's there's nothing you can really do about it, and so I wouldn't care too. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Is the point I'm making? Sure. Okay. Also, isn't like being goaded or like being the goat? Doesn't that originate from sports? It does originate from sports. Yeah, which is kind of ironic for us, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things that's kind of worked its way into Gen Z slang pretty heavily. Oh, um, yeah, I, I could see that. I think that's like it's kind of one of those things I see like millennials when they're making fun of Gen Z, they overuse goaded all the time. Yeah. <laughs> As do a we wanna, elder, hmm? do we want to end up having a poll that we ha hold on stream because there's there's polling built into Twitch and there's also I could install a bot that will create a poll. Um, Once we get some all right. So, what this. options? What options do we want to put on this poll? Do we say, you know, that for the role for if you are like an exemplar in the community that week, um, goaded is one of them. I was saying rainbow warrior because uh, we've got this growing rainbow theme emanating from this like terrible icon I've made. Uh, any other ideas for like what we could call it? I like golden demon painting competition. They do like a slayer sword and it's like a literal sword. So maybe some sort of uh, like warrior nomenclature could be cool. Um, like, like, I don't know. It could be a huckleberry. Yeah. But like, <laughs> instead of being honored by like the, 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 like the a guy named Barry, we name him Huckleberry. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, Barry, <laughs> B A R R Y. Yeah. That's really good. I give you this title of honorary Huckleberry. Yeah. Call him the Big Berry. Honorary Huckleberry. Well, it's going to be, it's also going to be a title that is going to, it's like a title that's going to be permanent. Like if you win this honor, it's like it's going to, you're going to stay with that role uh, permanently on the server. I love this hand pose. The crooked, the crooked ninety degree wrist is something I feel like I always put in my sketches, and then when I go to actually draw them, I am like, oh, it's so unrealistic. It's impossible. It's like so uncomfortable to hold your wrist at that pose. There's no reason to do it. And now I'm seeing it here. I'm like, yes, that's what I'm trying to pull off. This girl is hitting it. I guess floating in water is kind of like floating in the clouds, but, but different. Yeah, uh, wait, I, I can pull up the... What the fuck? Yeah, yeah this, this piece, the pose was actually taken from the same photo series. You can kind of tell it's got that, it's got that same, it's got the same vibe like floating in the water. And I'm I like that's one of the only times where I've borrowed a pose from a photo reference like this. So I used to whenever I was doing this before what I used to do is uh whenever I had a selection that I wanted to scale I would um, go to the move tool and scale it from there. But what I've been doing recently instead is um, just hitting, once I've got like, cause I've got the lasso tool just up on a button on my tablet. 
So I'm I've been able to like grab it and then just hit control T to pull up the transform controls, which is the same thing that I have by having show transform controls up on my move tool here. And it's been like one fewer, it's like fewer, less hunting around in the UI and like fewer button presses, just like faster streamlining, like the thing I'm already normally doing, which is something I'm trying to do more of right now. So I think one of the main things this pose is she's got this really twisted hip, the hips like pulled up really far on this forward side. And it's not at all where I'm intuitively looking for the post. So it's like, I'm finding myself having to like be reminded like where to put this. Same key combo. I, I set the key combos in, um, in Krita to the Photoshop defaults because they have a pre-made that's like copy Photoshop. But um, there's a lot of stuff that simply does not map from um, from Krita, or like from uh, Photoshop to Krita. Do we have any other good ideas for like uh, honorary titles or because otherwise, it, I feel like it's just going to be it's going to be goaded. So I don't feel like there's a lot of really strong opinions for something else. I think I'm going to go with my first idea, best idea. You just nuke most of the defaults and started to redo them. Left the hand side of the keyboard so basically easy to access them. Good muscle memory. Yep. Uh, angel I hierarchies. Uh, you know, I, this is like Huckleberry. I want to be its own separate thing away from Angelarium, and so I don't think I'm going to be doing like anything Angel themed around here. Like, I love the fact that it's been like a totally separate community. Like, I know there's some Angelarium fans in the in the Huckleberry community, but like, it really feels like it's it's its own thing here, away from my past enterprises. Hi, Druid. Hi, award Drew It. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for what the first it? time chat, CJ Comb, for that contribution. What is the concept behind the name Huckleberry? That may be a way to explore other name concepts. Oh, it's a quote from a movie. <laughs> a friend of mine was just like quoting a movie while we were hanging out in voice chat. There's a, the movie's uh, Tombstone. Val Kilmer says he's something along the lines of like, I'll be your Huckleberry. And it's like, it, it's like he's sort of stepping up to a challenge, you know? And I was like, damn, that's a good word. Yeah, I, I have that movie on VHS of all things. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, I, I recognize the clip because I am also a person of increasing years, you know? And uh, and so I was like, I was like, oh yeah, that's a really good quote. That's a really memorable quote from a really good movie. And it's like also a good, uh, what do you call it? Is is just immediately spoke to me in terms of just it had like a good sounding word. And I, when it comes to branding, I don't really think like the name of things is super super important. I really feel like regardless of what a thing or a person's name is, like. The associations we have with it often come from like how um, you know what we do with that name. So like if it's called Huckleberry or like you know Stinkfoot Academy or whatever. I mean, if you made a, a school called Stinkfoot Academy and it had the best teachers and it had the best curriculum and everyone who came out of there was the fucking like best artist in the world, people would be like, oh my god, Stinkfoot, it's incredible. <laughs> Like, people, regardless of, of how lame or bad a brand is, like, you have the ability to turn it into, like, a recognizable, worldwide, celebrated brand. Or to be a flaming pile of shit. Like, regardless of what the name is. Like, there's probably some value in naming things. But I, I love Huckleberry because it doesn't have, like, a strong association with a particular, like, culture or... Um, 
you know, it's not like you don't you don't associate it with like a, cult, a certain culture or geography or any anything like that. It's oh, I thought I turned all those sounds off. Damn. Um, it, so it's it's like a little bit like open to interpretation. And so I, I wanted an opportunity to be defining what the brand meant based off of like what happened with the community in like in our community spaces, you know, what what we did with building this like uh, space, you know, was going to end up defining like what Huckleberry meant for people in terms of art education and like community. And if we did a really great job, you know, people would permanently associate Huckleberry with like a great art community. And if we did a bad job, they would permanently associate it as like a piece of shit. It wouldn't matter how good of a name we gave it. Why not just challenge hero? Challenge hero? Okay. Yeah, I was going to be like, maybe call the, the role would be called like challenger or something. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, or just at least hero. It, like, it, it should delineate what the tag is from, though. So, like, people know what it is. Well, I, I, it's like, um, yeah, I was thinking about maybe it would be not just for challenges, but also for oh, okay. like people who. We're doing something else exemplary inside the community. Uh, Understood. That makes sense then. Um, yes. But it doesn't, it, you know, maybe there's a point there. Maybe maybe it should just be like, hey, this is just for challenges and we'll expand it if we need to. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. Like, I think chasing tags is kind of cool. And I know people love trying to collect them and little challenges that anyone can pursue is, is something that's probably uh, like a cool Discord activity. I know Discords where... There's all sorts of different challenges and things that members can do that that can accumulate more special tags and people chase them like like honestly I'm just kind of surprising so yeah I think it's kind of fun. I mean it's like it's not really there to like do much it's it's more just like hey we want to recognize our community make them feel good for doing something that we like and then also um, you know if it incentivizes challenge participation, that would be awesome. Like, cause I just want to see a, a lot of people participate in these challenges as we're doing them. Let's see. <laughs> Trying to figure out what I, there's some feeling of something that I want to fix here and I'm not, I'm trying to pin it down exactly. I feel like my effort to do um, these studies has really been paying off in terms of the work. The like the the recent piece I did was like much more grounded, like having like a full like humanoid figure with a face and everything in it, and like I just felt like all this time I've been spending doing reference made so much of that like way way easier. And it wasn't that I was able to like draw it all out of my head perfectly, but as soon as I brought it, the thing that I experienced last night was like, I was struggling with the face, but I knew that it was off more clearly from me having done the studies. And then when I went to go pull up the reference for it, I am, I, within like about two, three minutes of me having reference, I was already like doing way, way better with it. The whole thing snapped together really, really fast with the presence of the reference because of like my growing familiarity with like what I was looking at and what I was looking for from like having done all these facial studies. So like it wasn't just a matter of being able to like take the vocabulary that I had learned from the study material and like turn it into um, something from imagination. It was like I had this like framework that I was then able to build on top of as a result of doing it. But speaking of struggling, last time what I did was I did like a really loose sketch and then I was dissatisfied with it and I faded it out and I did a cleaner sketch up on top of it. 
And uh, that worked out pretty well. And so a lot of these minor changes that I'm kind of like waffling on right now kind of got like um, worked out through that process of um, going over it a second time. I'm wondering if maybe that's like where I need to be with this right now. Because as I'm like fixing things that I don't like about it, I feel like I'm also stiffening it up in the process. So I think I'm going to like do a slightly cleaner drawing maybe. Oh, hi, Kim. <laughs> oh, you're feeling unwell? That sucks. I've been enjoying watching your numbers go big on your last painting. You got like 20,000 people liking your recent work. It's fucking awesome. Decent fellow, good egg, pretty okay, did well. I like pretty okay. <laughs> I think as a tag, like pretty okay is up there for me as far as suggestions go. Because like I want, I don't want to overemphasize this idea that like, hey, you're um, you're like the best. Like I want it to be, I want this to be like a, you know, something that's a little bit more, um, something that's like a, a little less e extreme in its congratulation, just because it's like, it's not intended to illustrate like who's the best. It's like. So like pretty okay, I think would be maybe maybe right on. You also have like a brain thing going on with your existing roles, right? There's like big brain and artistic brain. Uh, yeah, well, the big brain thing was just me firing off the cuff, and then um, it was uh, it was like Dustin just like randomly added for the lower tier just like artistic brain, but then I was like we were talking a lot about people being autistic. And so like the artistic brain has kind of gotten a double meaning for like <laughs> being like talking about somebody having an autistic brain. I feel like if it's all different types of brains, it's a little bit too much on the same metaphor because we're not really that brain focused. There's also like eyes and hands, right? Which are big in art. Uh -huh. um, so you can have like a pretty okay hand or pretty okay eye. Oh, yeah, that's an idea for sure. I, don't, I was like gonna draw over this and now I'm like, now I'm like just kind of drawing underneath it in like the faded out layer. Because like now that the stakes have been lowered, it, it's like easier for me to go in and feel like I'm making edits. There's something about when the stakes are kind of elevated, like oh this is the layer, this is the part of the painting where the thing is going to happen, that like freezes me up a little bit. And as soon as that pressure's off, then I feel comfortable to go ahead and start fucking with it. Five head. More so Twitch lingo, bouncing off the brain stuff. Five heads, well, it's like it's receding hairline, but also it's like could be like kind of a backhanded way of calling somebody smart. There's their head is so big that it's like they're it's causing their hairline to recede because their brain's so huge. At least that's my understanding of it. Does that mean it's sort of like a masculine thing because it's like receding hairlines or like male pattern baldness? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, this is definitely not intended to be a masculine coded honorary. All right. 
Okay. I'm trying to not look directly at the reference when I'm making these kinds of marks, but see how they let the reference inform me a little bit and then look back at my drawing and focus on what is what's on the page here and how is it coming together. Trying to sort of figure out where the hip is here, because there's like some suggestion of anatomy that's that's like it's very very low contrast over here, and so it, it's easy to kind of like miss on it. Are you like trying to pick that out in the drawing, and then later you'll like um, treat the edge with some stylization or something? Or? Oh, I'm definitely going to stylize the ed these these edges here. These are begging to just get wiped out, especially like over here where we have this like um, hard edge at the stocking to like knock out the edge here like really aggressively when there's that one right below it is the sort of thing I love doing. It's like a great excuse to go and like um, Treat that uh, lost edge with a, a lot of aggression. Really attack it. She's really got more of a twist through the hip there than I think is evident from the lighting here. Like the more I try to draw it out, the more I can see how much there's a really extreme angle in the hips compared to like where it looks like the rib cage is here. Cause it feels like we're looking at the rib cage there and then we've got this hip that's really pushed up over here. But I wonder if maybe I'm getting it too high on the inside part, that's why it's kind of getting away from me. Oh, Dustin, we still have that portfolio review automation coming through on the Twitch chat. Oh, it accidentally disabled the manual command trigger, not the timer command. Oh, okay. 
the, the reference you posted of the, I think she's a belly dancer or some sort of dancer. Yeah. Did you draw that reference? Or no, that, I didn't get to it. I was, I, I sometimes like, I'm doing a study on, I was like trying to do studies on Friday also. I was like sometimes doing them after the stream. And um, this last Friday, I was just like wiped out. I, I ended up working on my own painting some quite a bit in the evening. And then when it came time to like do a study, I was just, I was just like so wiped out for the day. I ended up skipping, doing a study on Friday. And then um, I didn't do any studies over the weekend because I was working on that same painting again on both uh, Saturday and Sunday. That was a cool reference, right? I was, I At least for me. My uh, ellipses are pretty weak. But. <laughs> well, I mean, focusing on the stuff that you're weak in, that's like that's the some of the best stuff to study like that's i keep like um actually trying to put myself in a collision course with the things that i've been struggling with like that and i've been really happy that i have been hmm let's see there's something about i think the i think the knee actually should go lower here like my expectation on where everything's supposed to be in this drawing and where it actually is or actually i think a little ways off I feel like I get this sense of the drawing, then when I go to actually draw it out, I'm like clearly leaning towards like a certain conclusion because I'm whiffing on some of the structural stuff. Like the knee has got to be coming in lower here if it's going to be, if it's like, because it looks like the stocking goes about a third of the way to half the way up the thigh. But then like when I'm drawing it out on this side, it's like coming so close to the knee that it feels like it's in the wrong spot. What about sort of the like camera angle and lens? Cause I guess she sort of shot from below, maybe with a wide angle lens of some kind. Yeah. And then I also expect like that we're gonna see some more perspective on this ellipse here. But the way it worked out is like, we're getting very little of the ellipse on the, on this right leg. Does the water affect, it's gotta affect the camera optics somehow, right? Oh, maybe, I don't know. I, I like, you need to, you need to add at least one extra piece of glass between, you know, the lens and the, and the sensor. Now I see my kids are trying to mess with, are trying to log into my Steam while I'm on stream here. <laughs> Man, she's got strong ass shoulders. It's got to be like a gymnast or a dancer or somebody to have like, she's she's like, got some serious muscles going on here. And then she's got to be like flexing her her neck quite a bit to like actually get this sort of straight on look into the camera too, I think. I'm not deviating very much from the original structure, I think, here. Again, I'm finding myself wanting to double check my mistakes against the very literal structure of the of the reference rather than interpret it. Okay, enough fooling around, I think. I'm gonna get to putting in some values here and seeing where I get with it. I'm 
I'll try something different here. Try going, mm, I'm gonna try doing underneath the lines at 100%. Like typically what I've been doing is having kind of a semi-opaque um, or a semi-transparent like black that's been like loosely glazed over where the figure's gonna be. But um, like one of the things I wanna do is maybe um, build in some of my larger gradients earlier on. And to be able to do that really easily, I need to be able to use these flats as a mask. And so if I have like a cleaner flat that's coming in at 100% opacity, then I can easily like control click this layer to be able to select it. Because if you control click a layer, you automatically select the alpha channel for that layer. So having a 100% a layer that's got a 100% like uh, opacity flat on it allows me to like quick select like the silhouette of the figure. That way if I want to really quickly like mask in something soft using a gradient or a large soft brush, I can do it in just like a couple of clicks. The, let's see. I, I wonder if I should exaggerate the body pose a little bit more. I've got an opportunity to do it now before I like commit too much on this. I can mess around with it later too. If I wanna push it, exaggerate it. Do you movement lock? No, not really. Yeah, Milan's over here saying, wow, it's weird to watch a guy who's like a expert struggle at like stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, every artist struggles. It's like, it's just that like most artists don't show that part. Like most artists are only doing the things that they can like do really really well on camera i mean i think that's like most experts like in any field just like only do i was like wiping at my monitor because i'm wondering where the fuck this mark came from um just like most people don't show the stuff that they struggle with like in public spaces that's kind of like our default hmm could merge these down a little bit. I don't really care for these lines that much. That they're not really precise or anything. So if I merge them down, I've got one more chance to maybe do some transforms on this to really get push the um, push the pose a little bit more than what I've got. I'm having to relearn the way that the um, transform controls work because all the hotkeys for transform controls in CC are different, CS6. Hello, LGN.
feel like it does something different with the marching ants when you're in the selection mode because I'm having a harder time figuring how these things fit together when I'm in the middle of transforming. Okay, so if I've got this, you know, I can um, alpha lock it and take a soft brush and then hit it with a little bit of like, if I wanted to say, like, add in a sense of like a larger gradient on the, uh, the lighting, I can like add that really, really quickly, which um, can be really good for developing like the sort of loose sense of lighting first because like you always want to have these kinds of gradients but like built in with all of the other shading uh once you get later in there and so i typically am trying to sort of block in like the individual kind of blocks of light first and then i'm kind of like trying to nudge to make sure that like okay the light is being more focused into the center of the figure and like making these kinds of broader adjustments later on but I've been curious as I've been messing around with process stuff, like how much it might be really useful to like build in some of these broader like lighting gradients like earlier into the process as like just going from big to small, having the bigger gradients in there earlier as well, not just the bigger shapes. So as I'm starting to add these highlights, I'm immediately like losing edges against against this like lighter background. I think what I typically do is I'm painting like a darker background in um, over the top, but I kind of don't see the value in that today. I want to I want to see if I can maybe like focus instead on like. Um, you're just getting the background color to be a little closer to where I'm going to end it up with final and like touch it later. All this is really in pursuit of trying to get like uh, just see what little changes I'm going to make today with an anticipation that some of them might end up getting repeated. Other ones are just going to get dumped. The other thing I see people do that's really interesting is there's like this, a lot of people have this work process where they go and um, build in a lot of their AO, their ambient occlusion early on. And you see it like in these spaces where, like this is a really good example, a really good example piece for this because there's so much diffuse light coming through the water. You can see that like a lot of the uh, areas that are outside the key light are still really, really light, even though they're not getting this direct illumination. And that is like, that's coming from the huge amount of like bounce light that's coming from all over. So we get our darkest shadows in the places that are like the tightest corners where the light's getting trapped. And that's like here inside the mouth, inside the goggles around the eyes, right underneath the crack of like the um, shoulder strap on the swimsuit are getting like the uh, there's absolutely no light bounce coming out of those places, and so they accumulate these these uh, ambient occlusion shadows, or AO, and like those are where like those can be really really helpful to like see what the 3D structure of a thing looks like with very very simple lighting, and so people will sometimes just start there, and have the AO be the kind of underpinning for all the other lighting that they do later in the process. And I've always seen that and thought, man, that's really smart. These people are really good at painting. <laughs> 
and I, I've never really done it that much myself. Um, so I'll maybe do a little bit of it on this, on this piece. Because at the end of the day, we all, we need to do like the same stuff. There's like the same problems need to get solved one way or the other. It's really just a matter of order of operations. Like what things are we going to try to line up to do at the same time? What problems are we going to solve first versus second? And, um, it, you know, all this stuff is going to end up coming into play eventually. It's just a matter of like in what order are we going to address it? Because like the answers from some of these questions are going to inform answers for other ones. So like the more we can, if we get the AO like pinned down here, it will help inform the structure of the piece overall, as well as like a lot of the, you know, it give us a clearer sense on what the sort of 3D nature of the model is. And, um, and it, gives us, it gives us some nice freebies and it's easy to build on top of. I noticed, for example, you put in the AO under the chin, uh, like at the same level of darkness as the one under the shoulder strap. Mm -hmm. At least when I look at the reference, they look quite different. I'm just curious if that. Um. Yeah. I. But I, I'm planning. So one of the reasons why is like there's a there's the even though like um there's a different amount of uh, of lighting here and and here as there is here. I know like. I'm just not being too picky about making sure it's exactly right now because as long as it's like structurally in the right place, when I go back to redo the lighting on the face, there's like a lot of light subtlety around here with like bounce light hitting on both sides of the cheeks and like across the neck and stuff that like I'm going to know I'm going to bounce that out eventually. So it really is just like, you know, I'm talking about the order of operations here. Like there's some stuff that I know I'm kind of getting wrong, but it's I'm trying to make sure it's the stuff that I know I'm going to address later. Like I'm not just putting it off blindly, but I'm putting it off with some amount of intention. I have enough confidence to know what I'm going to get to later. And so I'm afraid to put down a thing that's wrong and then it's hard for me to make progress. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like, uh, with the face, I keep finding myself um, having to nudge everything around a lot because, like, if I go and I make some really early on marks for like the nose and the mouth, I'm, I keep finding myself like really questioning those marks later. Like that'll have like the position on on stuff like the nose and the mouth off, and it'll make the face look fucked up, uh, and it'll be distracting throughout the whole time when I'm working on other stuff. And I worry that other people are going to find it distracting too. And so it's like in an area where I know I'm going to have to like have some focused detail, like focused attention later, but I'm not there yet. Like I'm more confident in being like, yeah, that I know that's fucked and I'll, I'll like fix it later. <laughs> like this is not, not where I'm, I'm most concerned about my, um, my thing. Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong layer here. That's probably not going to help anybody. Yeah, that's the one place I've been really cheating in these studies is like just copying the eye line, the nose line, and the mouth line from the reference because it's like when they're off, it just I don't know. I guess your brain is really really tuned into faces or something. Oh, for sure. And then it was the one of the references I really liked was this one that was like all photo manipulated. It was like this weird looking lady with a cat because like it was the f the reference was already so screwed up looking, like because everything had been photo manipulated to look strange. It gave a lot of latitude for stylizing it. And that one I got lost in the block in. Like I, I, I've been doing this for an hour, and I, I didn't even like finish the block in because there were just so many blocks of color. Mm -hmm. At least for me, it was, it was overwhelming. Yeah, being able to spend two hours on these definitely adds a lot of ease to like 
spending extra laps fucking around with stuff trying to get it in place like i don't think everybody who's doing these is spending two hours on them and so if mine look more detailed than the average one i think it a lot a certain amount of it just comes down to scheduling Hey, wife. Hey, I came to see if you need anything. You want to hang out? It's quiet in the chat today. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to hang out, let me bring something to work on. Okay. Yeah, these larger, softer kind of color blocks is something that I've been aspiring to do more of. Just because, like... I find myself getting caught in the, spe the specifics of the detail too quickly. And I really like the look of like larger, softer rendering. Um, this ended up coming up in my recent painting too, because I had, you know, this big section of dark cloth that didn't, that was like kind of not the focus of the piece. And so I wanted to have like it to be broadly correct, but I didn't want to like I, I found that when I just kind of zoomed out and let myself get like a little bit with a hit it with a little bit of a softer touch, I was able to like get what I wanted out of it without getting caught up in like the minutia and the details and stuff. I immediately started liking the texture of it. Everyone seems like they're very tired. As everyone's in the chat saying they're very tired. And then I've got another friend I'm talking to who's got the flu. People are getting people are getting beat up right now. People are life is like walking on people this week. Well, I mean, a chronic fatigue syndrome is definitely not going to help your situation. Okay, so is it like a double layered thing that she's got? Or is this like a fold or a pattern, a stripe pattern? Hey. Oh, hey, coming in over here. You know what? I decided to do it this way because then I can I have all my stuff in Only here. Only one of us can be... Uh, having echoing hammer noises happening at a time because they either have to be on your side of the house or my side of the house. There is nobody on my side of the house right now. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we've got some uh, construction going on in the house right now outside. During my morning meeting with Dustin, it was just poundingly loud. Yeah, I think they're by your office now. That's why. But, yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're right in front over here. They were right in front of you, and now they're, like, right outside where yeah. I'm at. Well, um, that means they're making progress, and hopefully they will be done. <laughs> they will be done at some point. It'll happen eventually. Yeah. Eventually. I'm very happy that they're working. I'm very happy that we're getting this done. Me too. I'm very happy with my plans. Yeah, Anya got Anya went out to the nursery, the plant nursery where all the plant babies are, and they were like, "Oh, I heard you like Hoyas. Can you take all of the Hoyas?" We were like, "Don't want to carry these anymore. We'd like to give you a bunch of plants for free." Just just have them for and free. And she but said really, no, really and she cheap. spit in their face and ran away. <laughs> She told so me, you're working on a, you're working on a study again. Uh huh. I'm trying to see it over here. Uh, ugh. Yeah, the downside of doing Discord on my phone is that I don't know how anything works. I'm just gonna look at it later and work my on my own little piece here. Yeah, go ahead. 
Which is not as daddy, actually. For once. I like doing them, but I don't know what, what they can do with them afterwards. And since they're physical, like, you know, it's kind of weird. I mean, we are talking about sending stuff to people in recognition of their excellent efforts. Oh, that's true. If we want to, like, include them as a, like, uh, so I, I set up a part of the huckleberry.art website. So, like, uh -huh. uh, if when people, uh, people who participated in the last challenge, Sarah wanted to send all, send all of them something in the mail. And in order to collect, like, 20... Uh, mailing addresses I needed to set up like a system for collecting a bunch of addresses so I set up a store on the back end of the page that was secret and so we can set up like secret like claimable art things like so if somebody like is being recognized send them over there to go and like claim a piece of like free physical art maybe yeah I don't want to be presumptuous though and think that they want my studies because I don't feel good about them so. well it's an option I mean it's like if anybody who we're recognizing would potentially have the option to go over there and like grab something whether it's like a free pin I was thinking about getting, getting these pins made they can get a free yeah, physical pin you know or you know if they live inside the US and the shipping's cheap like we can give them like your work if you wanted to give it away my my pile of <laughs> of paintings, yes. Who knows? So I should probably try to find some pictures of like uh, what is it like Florida plants and animals and start working on those. Oh, for the what was it? For, was it for the mural thing? What was... No, it was for. Um, for oh, the, for that that gallery for show. For the radio station. Mm -hmm. I I know that I have some, but I'm just kind of trying to like find better reference for those spider mites every time. Yes, arena zerts. That's that's right. Anya quarantines the plants and she rubs them all down with neem oil and get and sings them a little song whenever she gets them. Actually, get rid of the fucking. It spider wasn't mites. spider mites that got to me. It was mites, like just the flat mites. Flat mites. Yeah, because the spider mites you can kind of see they make little webs. Flat mites you cannot see. You just like look at your plant and it's starting to look kind of deformed, and then you wonder like why is it not growing? And that's when you need a microscope and. Yeah, we have a plant. We have a special plant hole. microscope specifically to solve this issue. I went really deep with plants this past couple of years. But spider mites are bad too. Those attacked one of Cuba's plants outside. It is really quiet here today, surprisingly so. I know, I know. I'm like... Mm -hmm. Or did I just kill conversation? No, no, it out? was like this, been like this all day. Everyone's yourself? very quiet. Everyone's talking about how uh, tired they are. Well, Jen's like, mm -hmm. how are you so good with values? How? I don't know. I'm just... I'm doing values differently than I normally do here. I just like... Uh, this piece has like a really, really simple construction when it comes to values because it's like just this one big ass key light and then everything else is like these kind of subtle reflections. And so I'm adding like these more subtle reflections looking for like on here, it, you would think like this whole area is kind of all the same color. Uh, but if you flatten it out all the way, it looks too flat. And so I'm noticing there's just like a little bit of extra glow that's coming off of like this side from underneath. And it's giving, and you can see it here when we like mock it up on the navigator, it adds just a little bit of volume to the figure. So even just like a single brush stroke to like add on some of that subtle gradient is going to give us like a more volumetric or a more like, you know, volumeful or whatever the word is like figure here. Cause it's like, we know there's a 3D form it's just a matter of finding like, where are these gradients? Where are they starting? Where are they ending? You know, you can simplify them down a lot.
it's just like here we can see like this light that's coming across this shoulder is all fairly even all along here. But then it's got these couple of spots that just fade a little bit more softly. Like underneath the breast here, we're just getting like a little bit more soft transition. And so as long as we are like keeping an eye for where the transitions are very, very different, I think that we're likely to get like a decent looking, um, it's gonna, it's gonna come across like pretty accurately or like it, it'll at least look nice and like volumetric. Just cheating off the reference as much as possible. It looks like a fun reference. It is a fun reference. I was saying I used one of these other uh, pieces from this set as a reference for an Angelarium painting in the past. And that, mm. there's like a whole bunch of these then and they're all great um it's just a really it's like one of my very favorite reference sets but i have like only a handful of them and they're like all kind of uh like low res so i was mm. thinking that i should probably see if i can seek it out and get it in like a better resolution uh -huh. just because it's something that i like really want to steal from a lot <laughs> Because it's uh it's such a it's such a cool photo shoot and it's like so exactly the kinds of poses that I want to do. Mhm. Mm well, you know what? I think the reason why you didn't hear any uh, hammering was because they took a break and now they're back. Now they're back to hammering. Fantastic. Well, no, now they're back, just in general, physically back. So there, you might hear some hammering soon. Oh, they went out to lunch. I think so. All right. Well, if you guys hear hammering, just know that good work is being done <laughs> for once. Finally, we yeah. like to get add a little bit of lore here. We ended up hiring somebody who was like a, a neighbor recommended a guy, Florida work guy, some old retire, some retiree who is a bit of a fast talker. And he did some work and I was immediately like, I think this is about to suck a bunch of water into the under part of our roof and just trap it there. It's like, this looks like a system, instead of repelling water, it's just going to like draw in and capture the water, <laughs> which is exactly what you don't want. And it turns out anyway. I'm smart and I was right. And after uh, we, we put it off for several months to like get this looked at, and now after only having been there for five months, um, this, uh, having a professional take a look at it, it turns out I was exactly right. And that like, that has been what's happening. And that like, after only a few months of Florida weather, that these things that are inside my roof have been like filling up with water and rotting, like almost instantaneously. My favorite quote of yours from today was uh, like one of the workers asking you if you if he heard them yell because he spilled a whole lot of water. Yeah, he pulled a pan he pulled like a frame. ceiling panel out of and like a ton of water just like splashed out and hit him in the face, um, which is very peculiar. <laughs> like not because it, it hadn't <laughs> rained recently. Doesn't that happen when you pull out panels? Yeah, it hadn't even <laughs> rained recently, which means that like it was like my, our our roof was like acting like a fucking saguaro cactus, and just like you know holding holding in uh, uh, water for the rainy season, you know, to to cat to tide it over to keep all the bugs feasting well until the rainy season came back or whatever. It was it was awful. It is rainy season right now. It is the rainy season right now. <laughs> Uh, so we really, really don't need to have like a shitload of water up inside of our roof. Nobody needs it. Nobody wants it. So I'm, I'm very happy to have all that taken care of. And like, um, it's, it's going to be great. Like we're going to have like a regular functional roof that just tries to like get rid of the water and not like hold on to it. That would be wonderful. And it's going to cost us thousands of dollars to get there, but it'll be worth again, it. again, but it'll be worth it. Yeah. The guy who did the work originally also probably like I didn't get receipts from him and I didn't know that much about this kind of stuff. And now I'm like, 
everybody who's ever going to be doing work for me, if they're going to be charging me for materials, I'm insisting on receipts. Because uh, it. I think have... that was my bad, actually, for uh, like me not thinking about it back then. Yeah, you were the per first person to come in contact with him. You were kind of managing it. Yep. And uh, and we didn't get any receipts for any of it, and we really, really should have gotten receipts for that stuff. We should have, yes. Uh, probably overcharged by a couple of thousand dollars on materials. It's an expensive lesson I have to learn. Yeah, homeowner shit. Getting a live model to the same poses is pretty impossible without equipment or a large body of water. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is definitely a different approach that I'm used to taking. I think I'm going to start to add color on it at this point. Or maybe just, I'm going to do a little bit more here. Um, Are you going to put your own spin on this one or no? I mean, I am already kind of stylizing it a little bit, like lighting wise. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just going to be the main thing is I'm I'm going to try to stylize the sort of like lighting and finish it a little bit. I don't, but I don't think I'm going to be like putting any kind of new subject matter in here. You should give her wings. She looks like a fairy. That's a very fairy pose. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give her fairy wings. <laughs> I know you want, but I'm just saying that you should. Should. There's no mm -hmm. shoulds in art. You know that. <laughs> It is a very fairy pose, though. It's a cool pose. Don't say it's a fairy pose. It's a cool pose. It's a badass pose. It's like a, a mid-flight one. Uh-huh. It's like super badass and epic. It's not It's not a fairy pose. Why Why is fairy like a... You can't question my masculinity with the pose you. of this. It's, very, it's, all, it's all very badass. And I, sh I should actually, before I add some um, grading maps and stuff, I should do a little bit of background treatment on here. Um, in the original, it's just like, again, a very soft gradient. But I want to stylize that gradient a little bit by using some texture brushes. Creating additional imperfections on purpose. It also gives me an opportunity to do a little counter lighting because we've got this lighter side on the, on the right and then uh, a darker like shadow on the left. And so we can uh, counter that a little bit with the background to give it a little bit more uh, contrast to the figure without actually having to like push the range of the values further. It's a classic trick. Small jetpack. Okay, okay. I <laughs> I like that it's underwater. She doesn't need to be doing anything else unless she's magic. Uh, maybe she's got angel powers. I'm wondering An if item fishes or octopus. An octopus, huh? Seems suggestive. A dolphin. A dolphin? No, they were, now you're talking. I love how uh, chunky you've got the hair going right now. Uh, I know. I'm like very happy with that because that's something I feel like I don't pull off enough is that kind of like loose, soft chunkiness. I love seeing that and I want to do that in more places throughout the the work and like the fact that I managed to do that without getting overly into it on the hair is like one of the wins from today. Yeah, that's I, great. I do want to build up the top of it over here a little bit. Don't want to change the style too much. But I always love that look and so I, uh, I want to replicate it a little bit. I like her expression. Not that you zoomed in for a second and I got yeah, to see I, it. Yeah, I made it so that I did a loose suggestion of her face without her looking like a horrible gremlin, which is also a big win for today. Because that's not a given <laughs> when it comes to me. Like, I feel like I can get very specific faces looking fine, but like when I get loose around the face, it just there there have been so many studies that started off with like very gremlin-y in the face. I, she looks cute and very pleased. 
Uh huh. Yeah, I want her to like look like she's having a good time floating out here in the ocean, flying around with a jetpack. Uh huh. And with and fairy wings, and the mohawk and the wheelchair. <laughs> Speaking of flying around, have you guys um, seen the Cirque du Soleil show that, that's been happening at uh, Disney Springs? No. No, the last one I saw was, I only saw one, and it's been a few years back. But um, I, I have been wanting to go back. Is it is it a good one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my girlfriend and I just saw it um, about a week ago, and it was amazing. The, the theme of it is uh called drawn to life and it's basically Ooh. like an homage to old disney animations um with like its own narrative of like this woman whose father was an animator and she wanted to grow up to be like him and like the villain against her is basically like a old drawing that she like had thrown away and so, like, th there's this woman that's just dressed up as, like, a huge crumpled up piece of paper carrying, mm -hmm. like, a handbag that looks like a pink <laughs> eraser. The whole thing is fantastic. I really, really recommend you guys I, I kind of it. love it because it sounds silly when, like, you talk about it. But, like, since I've been to one of the shows, I can, like, imagine it looking great. Yeah, it was, it was, we, we shed tears throughout. Like, yeah. the first few seconds we were crying. It was just amazing. Yeah, I think it might be like a solo trip with my mom, Pete, for that one. Yeah, if you want to, sure. Well, I know, I know you're usually not interested, and I don't know if I want to. I haven't been to a, I, I haven't been to a Cirque du Soleil show before, so if there's one that's like easy to get to, it might actually be a fun thing. For I me. just, I don't know. Like but, uh, the, the one that I really, really am sad about missing out on was Alegria, and I really wish I could see that one in person. Yeah, this one's in Orlando, and um, I think the Drawn to Life show is going on um, until maybe October. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I really recommend it. And uh, the set design's incredible, the music, uh, the performances. Like, I've seen a regular circus show before, and that was pretty cool, but uh, like, this was. Um, yeah, uh, I'm never going to forget it. So I haven't seen a circus show since I was little, um, like a, just like a regular circus show, like way back when I was in Poland. And then a few years back, uh, when Pete's parents were in town, we ended up taking boys in there, and it was a completely different experience than the Cirque du Soleil one. Um, yeah. yeah, we went to like a classic so, circus show, big time. It was a little bit weird. Like it was really fascinating what they could do, <laughs> but like the mood of it just made me feel uncomfortable. I don't know. Yeah. Just like, yeah, you don't get way... that vibe from the Cirque du Soleil at all. No, it's you all don't. Very... <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the Cirque du Soleil, I just remember being, like, awed and, like, oh, this is so cool and this is so amazing and the music is beautiful and I cannot believe they, like, they did that. And, like, I remember sitting in the other circus performance and there were parts which just kind of made me want to sink into my chair. <laughs> <laughs> like, why yeah. is it, like what is it about it like i think it was maybe um the fact that they were like clowns, are, about... clowns are cringe it wasn't the clowns it was the people in charge like when they showed up and they're like you know the the like gala dress like you know oh this guy, yeah yeah guy like, you're in this tiny ass up. little tent and like nobody here's fancy and you're dressing up like this is the most extravagant thing in the world but it's kind yeah. of like it's kind of like low-key it made me feel a little bit sad, like, because, like, you realize that this was that, like, you know, back in the days, but it isn't anymore. And it felt yeah. like, it felt kind of like they, like, you know, just kind of stayed back in times while the world moved on, yeah. you know? Yeah. All right. Color, 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 color. Gradient map. But if it sounds like something that you would want to do with me, Pete, then I, I mean, uh, we do don't it. have a lot of solo trips, and it's just over in Orlando. Like it is. 
And you're right, we don't have many solo trips. I was going to create some more gradients for everybody. Oh, for the, for the, like, um, as resources? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I feel like the ones that are kind of built in with Photoshop, I don't love them. I used to like them, but I, I've heard that they have different ones now. They have different ones now. So, like, part, I, I'm sharing the gradient pack. If you go to huckleberry.art, you can go download the gradients I have right here. Most of these are Photoshop pre-mades, but, like, the old version of Photoshop that they don't have anymore. So, um, there's, like... I really, really like those old ones more so than the new ones because the new ones are kind of boring. Like the old ones, they do like a bunch of weird broken shit and like the new ones are like, are they, the new ones are like just like normal complementary colors and like, you know, simple gradients. While the, the old ones were like weird crappy effects that I, I thought were I like the cool. orange and purple one. Yeah. And then I also have made some custom ones, and so it like my gradient map pack is like a mixture of both of those. And um, I wanted to make like other weird sort of effects driven ones, ones that were like more inspired by like the kind of weird stuff that I do with gradient maps. And uh, See, so I've got, um, I'm not glazing this in at a hundred percent. So if I, if I do like a second pass at parts, I get a little additional hit of like gradation on the color. So you can see like doing a solid single pass, I'm getting something like that. While if I go in for a second time, I get this like hotter hit of color. giving me a little bit more color variation, a little more control. Oop. More of a purple pink that you're getting there. Uh, yeah, you know, I wanted to go for something that was like a nice striking pink color. I can fuss with it. But I don't really care about matching the original so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do kind of like an orange or pink with this color scheme. I think I know partly why um, she's making me think of a fairy. It's also the stripy socks. Also the stripy socks? That will do it. Yeah, it makes me think of that, um, like Amy Brown type of fairies. Classic. Yes. Hot Topic fairies. Th that's right. And then, yeah, we're getting that really hot pink wherever the light is, like, hitting it directly. I feel like I just made my painting worse. Yeah, it happens. I hate when that <laughs> yeah, it's, it's worse when it happens in, like, with traditional media, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's one of the things that keeps me away from traditional media is this, like, feeling that, like, at any moment I could just absolutely fuck it up. Creative Caliber saying, I love Amy Brown. Get some a Amy Brown uh, love here in the chat. I feel like I appreciate her more now than I did when I was younger. Wet socks make me uncomfortable. I mean, everybody hates wet socks, but like, I think if I were to wear like a pair of socks pulled up to my knees and I had them on like while I was swimming, I think I'd probably be fine. It's as soon as you step out of the pool that it becomes a real problem. And then your legs get pruny, your feet. Yeah. I'm getting DMs from people. Is, is something the matter? Oh, weird. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no, never mind. They were like, I to click on my matter? link I sent earlier and it was broken. Okay. No, I, I, sometimes when I get multiple DMs from people while I'm working, or like while I'm streaming, it's them like trying to alert me to the fact that like my, you know, like my camera's on and my balls are hanging out or something or like real, that needs to be addressed immediately. It's not the case. Did it happen? No, not, not literally. <laughs> like, or I'll be, I'll be doing <laughs> a thing where I'll be minute. like talk, I'll, I'll be thinking I'm screen sharing something and I'll be talking about it. And then they'll be like, 
uh, yeah, you're not, you haven't been screen sharing for the last 20 minutes. I'll be like, fuck. Uh. Mm. Then I have yes. to go back and try to say the same oh. things again, but shorter. Wait, what did you just say? Well, like if I do that, I have to like, I want to, I, I still want to show the things. And so I try to show it again, but I try to like say the same shit again, but shorter. Mm. Mm. What are you, what are you going to say? I was going to, cause you, you were swearing, which reminded me, um, that Kuba's like Kuba has informed me recently that one of his parents, uh, like one of his friend's parents said that they feel bad swearing in front of me. Feel, feel bad swearing in front of you because you're so innocent sounding. Which is funny because like <laughs> I like really don't like it. You married to me. Yeah. I know. But um I guess um Kuba's uh friends parents do not know you. No. Well most people don't most people make a lot of assumptions about you based off of your demeanor. And the fact that I sound like a child, which I'm not. Yeah. Like, in fact, I am older than Pete, if anybody. <laughs> yeah, Anya is older than me. Don't let the voice, don't let the voice fool you. Fool you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I, don't worry. I dumped my old wife and I, I picked up a new one, and, you know, <laughs> went to the local college and grabbed myself a fresh one. Yeah, I really do think I messed it up. You messed it up for good? Mm, I just don't like it anymore. So. Oh. <laughs> we'll see if I can save it somehow. I'm not doing any blending modes on getting these sock stripes. I'm just going in at like 20% opacity with black and just glazing over the top of the rendering that's already there. And like the amount of contrast that I built in earlier is just blending with that perfectly fine. And I'm gonna hit it with like a little bit of that um, hard Purple. light to, yeah, the pink from the um, hard light on top of all this. Like with the gradient map on top of it, it's like definitely bringing out different hues on the lit part. And then when I'm doing this, like I'm, when I, my by default the uh, color picker selects all layers, but if I want to just select like the layer that I'm on, you can go and change those settings. If you pull up the color picker, you can say like uh, you can pick the sample size as well as like if you want to work underneath like a blending mode, you can change it to like current and below, and it'll do that. Um, but what I typically do is uh, to keep things fairly simple is I alt click the eyeball, which makes it set only one layer shows up. If you alt click an eyeball and then you alt click it again, it'll like show, it'll hide all layers, but that one, and then it'll bring the rest of them back. So if I need a color off of just a specific layer, I'll alt click the eyeball, grab it, grab the color, and then put it back on really quick. And that's my solution for like grabbing something that's out of a blending mode like that. Let's see, how much, I'd say about 40, 50% opacity there. And then once this is all kind of blocked in, I plan on like playing with this a little bit. Um, I can either like mess with it at this on this layer, but I think that like, uh, once I have the basis of it kind of established, I'm planning on, um, like just working on top of it because I don't really want to like keep a clean layer stack. I've been working with like kind of a cleaner layer stack style like system today, but I plan on like getting back to my crusty old ways as soon as I, as soon as I can. I'm gonna go grab a drink, right. so. BRB. I hear the thumping is returned. Okay. So, 
Um, yeah, I've got the pink in there. I haven't done anything as far as the colors. It's like all, it's actually all still grayscale with a gradient mode, or gradient map over the top of it to create the rough lighting for the skin tone. Like the way the lighting is here, there's so much blue reflected from the blue surface of the pool. Like the pool walls are all blue. And so all of this bounce light that's in here is all blue and it's throwing like the color palette for the whole figure. And, um, and so we're seeing like this, every part of her is being kind of like tinted blue, except for there's like some warmer yellow coming in off of the direct illumination. So we're seeing almost no skin tone. That is like, oh, she's got pink hair and a pink swimsuit, which is very cute. Uh, so that's like making it so that we actually don't need to apply any local color here in order to get it to feel more or less right. But like I could probably glaze in like a super small amount of pink from the swimsuit color, especially like at the place at like the sort of shadow terminal here to saturate that like transition point and like get a more of a sense of skin tone. without uh, actually having to do one because we're going to get it. All it needs is like a change in temperature more so than like a specific local color. So we could do this whole piece basically, I think with two colors and black. Um, but I don't know. Let's see what happens if we maybe do give a little bit of orange here to give a sense of a little skin tone that's different from the background color. Maybe a little lighter. Because this definitely, oh, that's an, oh. definitely brings what were off you the going background to say? some. Hmm? What, were, what you saying? were you going to say? No, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say that Dustin suggested I make some uh, sprites, like icons for the Discord with spread links. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we really don't have this sort of warm skin tone happening as much in the reference, but I kind of like the way that it pulls the figure off the background. And I also kind of wonder what happens if we push a little bit of a teal light back here, like so that we have areas that are brighter, but also go cooler fighting like the tendency of the uh, gradient map a little bit. Anya's characters are really great for emotes. I was trying to make her have her make pins. Yeah, the ref is very pastel. Having like this warmer skin tone and then washing some of the blue over the top of it, I think looks really cool. Like getting some of this blue back in here by like glazing it over it, I think is kind of neat. I like that you're blue is more greenish than the reference i like it yeah the kind of like deeper more vibrant color Putting a little bit of this blue over the top of it is creating an interesting mix of colors that it's definitely selling the kind of underwater vibe in the through the color palette. Pete. Max. Can I ask you a question? Yes. 
Of course. Uh, where did you find the reference on uh, Pinterest? Oh, on Pinterest? Uh, I mean, I just sort of browse through until I find an image and then it like, um, if I go to Pinterest. I liked it a lot. It just feels like it's everywhere. And there's some saw, you might hear some saws in the background or whatever. Like, here we go. We've got a weird Japanese photo shoot right off the bat based off okay. my prior thing. And then I love just following through all the rec like the rabbit hole of like recommended photos. Like here's a photo that we already, a couple of photos we already used for references in past days. And then there's like plenty of other really good ones here. We got some really dynamic dancer reference, some peculiar um, like, like foot, like uh, fashion poses. Uh, some ones with some really good, like I, I really think this is a cool photo just cause it's got a really nice dynamic angle, but like there's like a lot of like motion in it with the wind kicking up and lots of different materials and stuff. Cool lighting stuff happening. Yeah. Could be really good as a reference piece. Oh, here's another one. The one I had on Friday, it's right here already. Yeah, I I just like kind of like to dig down through the layers of Pinterest like this and it it's like always done well for feeding me more of the kinds of things I'm looking for. Yeah, no, I do the same, but I was just wondering if you searched by something specific. Uh no, I'm usually just like Based off of my past searches, it kind of knows where my aesthetic is. And I think some of the stuff I've saved before, it also knows where my aesthetic is. And then it's always giving me kind of a mixture of like things that I'm familiar with that I've seen before, along with new pieces. Um, mm -hmm. it, like it, it seems to be set on like repeating a certain amount from prior sessions in order to make it so that like the results are grounded, but then also you know, choosing a certain amount of diversity to sort of lead you in potentially new directions, find new rabbit holes. Which oh, I found it. <laughs> you found this, this photo shoot in specific? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you find one shot from there, when you click on it, you should probably find like more from yeah, the same shoot. Lots. Oh, thank you. I guess mm -hmm. with a lot more people as well, three to four. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if we should stylize the colors even more by playing around with some of the gradient map effects on top of what we have here. Because there's a lot of, there's always a lot of potential. This Do looks like a, a very peat face to me now. Uh -huh. Like when you put that, when you put that gradient map on it. Right. I mean, we really changed the overall vibe of the lighting here. Like with a more complete color palette, adding another gradient map on top of it, it's oftentimes going to create like way too much. Um, but there's sometimes going to do something really funky that's going to be like cool and worth digging deeper on. There's also the ability to take something like this and pile a gradient onto it. Now I now I hear the oh, hammering we, in stereo. Yes, <laughs> you can hear it from my stream and from the and from uh, outside. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, the the new grade the new way they do gradients in CS in CC is really really good, like how they actually show you like where it is because before, in in CS six it's just like it'll show you, the one stroke but then you can kind of like tweak it after the fact. I had built up muscle memory for like just making a gradient and undoing it, making it undoing it over and over again, because that was just the nature of doing gradients.
Yeah, I don't want to bring too many weird colors into this and turn it into something that it doesn't want to be. I'm over here stroking my chin. You can't see it on the VTuber avatar, but I've got my hand up stroking the chin, thinking, mm. taking in the possibilities, calculating all the possible features, listening to somebody hammer holes in the side of my house. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm going to. I'm just sitting here being quietly angry at my painting. <laughs> just quietly just seething at your own creation. Yes. It's like not the worst thing I've ever done, but it had such promise I thought. <laughs> not you anymore. Fucked it up. You fucked it up again. I did. And this is why I work small. So your mistakes are always tiny? So my mistakes are just like a day worth of mistake. And I'm like, okay, let's move on to the next thing. All right, I think it's a hair dryer time. I think I got to get in here and do some details. Oh, what was a flat boy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been pulling some uh, brushes from the brush pack. I've been, I've been experimenting with a little bit and like adding them to my defaults to see like if they are going to um, stand up to some future work. Because I had some applications with some of these that I thought they did a really good job at. And now I want to see if maybe I can like... This one has like a... Um, actually uses the tilt sensor. But you can see it's like kind of going all over the fucking place. So like if I get it lined up, it's not that it, it specifically like I'm not exactly sure how it works. Like I feel like if I get into the right position and hold it, it's fine. But I'm not entirely sure where it's want like what position actually controls it. But to have like a nice, wide, flat scraping tool that has the ability to reposition is something that I've never had in my toolkit before. And I know that like a lot of people use stuff like this. So I'm gonna give it a try. It gives definitely, um, it gives that nice like, like scrapey look with like the big flat marks. I like a nice flat edge brush look. I like that in traditional painting and I like the, um, digital equivalent of it too. Oh my god, they're like <laughs> sawing chunks off some of the wood outside. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's one fifty four. I'm not sure how you're feeling about time. Shit. Uh, I've been taking it really leisurely. So I'm like on the last steps here. I'm going to wrap it up on the way that I'm going to wrap it up in a way that I like. Maybe spend a couple extra minutes on it. And then tomorrow yeah, I'm going to be... Yeah, it's not me for once rushing you. And yeah, <laughs> hands on your hips. Tapping uh, your foot. I... I think tomorrow I'm going to try to get through these initial stages faster. Because I think if I want to spend, keep it at two hours, like I think I need to get through like the earlier stages a bit quicker. Which is probably not a bad thing overall. We have a phone call. Is it scam hour? Yeah, it's scam hour. All the scam calls always pile up sometime in the afternoon. Well, I'm just looking at this and I've, I'm like, oh, the, I've got the darker part on the bottom and the lighter part on the top when it should be inverted. Yeah, this... This like scrapey brush is giving me like a nice painterly finish and it's not fighting me too bad. It feel it feels pretty natural overall. But I think I'm gonna Is it the same one you were using or is the one I was just using in the background, yeah, and like I didn't switch and I found that like it's good for if I get it at a good angle, I can scrape Maybe out a small. nice hard hard edge on it. But I think I'm going to I want to mix this up with the round brush a little bit because the round brush gives me like just a ton of control and this is the phase of the painting where I'm I'm needing to get that that control in order to pick out my edges and like get all my details in place lost the chat chat where you go i missed the three mm -hmm. hour streams but i get it uh yeah i am really really thinking about doing a 12 hour stream just because like i watch the numbers and the numbers say like do more stream do longer streams um but i can't like my day just won't allow it so um i've been working really really hard recently and packing in a lot of really good solid hours and uh it's like, I want to give an experiment to see what happens with a really, really long stream where I'm like bringing more people on to talk and I am working for a long time on either a number of pieces in a row or like on some like more like, uh, you know, long form work. And, uh, and yeah, I would be really interested to see how that does, like see if more people show up and like a good day in marathon yeah well i would just be like maybe make it like a subathon sort of thing or be like i was actually thinking about like hey i've got this 
sort of three month window planned out to see how big we can make Twitch in the three months. And like maybe towards the end of that three months, like just do like a big subathon at the end and blow out the numbers on it. And, mm -hmm. um, but then I was like, oh, maybe I should do that at the end of, of this first month. And then it just like, it washed past me. Like I didn't. You have so many things you need to do. I have a lot of things I need to do. <laughs> Like you need to do your Kickstarter thing. Yeah, I've got a Kickstarter coming out in like uh, 14 days, and I have not. I, I did some work on it back in the back last year when it was going to be launched at the end of like uh, last fall, and then I um, I scuttled it because I switched strategies, but now it's like back on and it's coming up fast, and I haven't I haven't started working on it again. So I just made a note today. Because I need to at least scope out what the tasks are. Like, because I'm yeah. not even sure what the work is that needs to be done is the problem. Let alone, like, you know, actually finishing the work. I, like, don't That's even know what... That's usually the panicky part for me, where it, I don't know what needs to get done, and it feels overwhelming. It feels way more overwhelming when you don't have a plan on, like, what work mm -hmm. needs to get done. But I've been really good at, like, making lists for work on uh, Obsidian. And so, like, I just have a task that is for tomorrow morning, like, first thing in the morning. Okay. To, like, it, rather than being like, oh, I need to do it today. Today, like, I have, like, oh, if I'm not doing it immediately, I'm like, I'm, it's going to slip away. Like, I have a system for kind of capturing this stuff before it slips away, which means that I can say, okay, well, right now I'm working on this. And tomorrow morning, when I sit down at my desk, I've got this thing waiting for me and I'm going to take care of it then. And I take that time really seriously so it doesn't keep getting rolled over and rolled over and rolled over. And that is like, that is what's been making me like crazy productive. It's like choosing when to say yes and when to say no to stuff that needs to get done. And um, I, I've been taking that process like really, really seriously. And it's been paying dividends, real dividends taking some of this background color and just like washing it into the shadows because there's like all of the shadow fill that's happening um and it like i think it does i think it looks pretty cool to like have that that um color like the background color kind of seeping into the shadows Twitch number go up plus other plans seem like oil and water mixing. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, Twitch is really tough in part because when you do Twitch, you can't do anything else. Like you are so locked in to be doing whatever you're doing on Twitch that like it is really, really hard to like balance time because Twitch just like succeeds by you dumping all your time into it. Dork artist for today's uh, raid. I'm into it. So, um, I mean, like, 
it's uh, it's not just about balancing time on any given day. It's about balancing which days, uh, what things happen on. So that's why I'm thinking like, hey, you know, I'll keep it pretty manageable on the days like uh, today where I'm, um, you know, doing my regular daily studies. And then when it comes to like, and then pick a day where I'm just like, let it get completely out of hand and just let it take over my entire life for a period of time. Okay, so we got a little bit of reflected light on the bottom of the hand here. I think this warm color might work for that. And then we have a little bit of separation on these digits. Spending all day like slowly poking away at like a like nice organic bit of rendering is like my idea of time off. So it like I kind of wish I could just spend all day messing around with like increasing levels of detail on this thing. So like what I don't want is this feeling of stripiness here as I'm like making these vertical marks that are kind of making these parallel stripes. What I really want is something that feels like um, really blended and creamy across like a longer, smoother transition like that. So I think I'm gonna try to over exaggerate that transition a little bit by really like lowering my opacity and just blending it side to side to really get like that smoother blended edge or maybe it might even be worth it to use like a soft brush here it might be faster just go like really murder these edges with a soft brush That's cool looking. I like that. Do that again. Just use a full on soft brush instead of blending with my hard edge round. Did you do the art for Blind Guardian's last album? God Machine? I did, yes. Technically, I didn't do that piece for them. I did a different piece for them, and they, they used it on some other stuff, but then they licensed that piece for me. It was a pre-existing piece, and I uh, used it on their cover, which has led to a lot of people asking me whether or not it was stolen because <laughs> they recognize it as my art, and then they see it on their Spotify, and they go, hey, what the fuck? What is that doing here? And I feel bad. Like I 
hope that they're not getting a bunch of weird, crappy DMs, like of people asking them about like the authorship of the piece, because you know I loved working with them, and I don't want them to have a hard time. But yeah, I don't know why people think this uh, battle, this very, very famous band that's been around forever, would just randomly steal art off of the internet but I mean I guess people don't know either me or the band well enough to know that like it's uh, you know pretty obviously like an official sort of thing alright there we go so this is cool like you know the the way that the um, skin kind of pushes up over the seam on the bottom and then it pushes this shelf under on the on the top gives us this nice like uneven like it's it the overlap works differently on the um, top as it does in the bottom people love to start drama on the internet yeah it is. Uh, thanks, Zan guy. Yeah, it's um, people are always looking to be like fucking Internet Batman <laughs> and like find a crime and be like, I can smell crime in this city. I can sense that somebody stole that JPEG. And so typically when I get those messages, like I just don't want to have to write the same thing to people over and over again who like could Google it. So I just delete those DMs. I'm pretty good at responding to DMs most of the time, but that's like one of the DMs that I like very regularly just delete. Sorry, guys. Uh, I know they're all well-wishing and stuff, but like, yeah, I don't know. Everyone's always, uh, I'll let you know if somebody starts like stealing my stuff on a massive scale. It'll come back to me. Because, like, uh, I've done experiments where I tried stealing my own stuff, and it comes back to me almost instantaneously. I get people are so happy to report stuff. So it's, like, really, really easily for me to get a handle on, like, what's stolen out there. Um, so feel free to report it or whatever if I don't get back to you. or like, But also, like, maybe Google it. <laughs> I would say, like, just uh, give it a quick, quick old... Visit to Uncle Google to see if maybe he's got some wisdom to say on the topic. That soft brush effect mixing with the figure in the background a bit. I know it's so easy. It's like such a freebie. And the more I do it, the more I feel like I have a sense of like where it fits good. And it it's um it 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 feels so excellent to look at. And it, it's like one of the simplest things to add to a painting. I, I almost feel bad. It's like it feels so free uh, as like an option that I I almost worry that like I'm overusing it because I know anybody could basically go ahead and do the same thing. They just they would just get the same look in their painting too, and I wouldn't. It doesn't make me special to like do this, but um, you know what? It looks so good. At, it, like I think people are are just happy to see it every single time and never get bored of it because I never get bored of it. Lost edges always look good. Do no lost That's edges. something I should try someday. Yeah, you should Because I never do it. You never do it. It's such a freebie. Nope. Well, it's funny too is the people will, they're like, again, like internet Batman will like pop up and they'll be like, ah, I noticed that this edge that you accidentally forgot to put an edge here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Supreme MTE. I had issues with Twitch, but they uh, get in the, al uh, but to get in the album, album cover subject, I really like the artworks Fallujah took for their albums. It fits the so well with the music. Yeah, I was super happy that Fallujah wanted to come back for more art after they licensed that first piece. And I thought uh, I was really happy with the way it worked out. I thought it was so cool. They used like my art as like their main branding. And then when they came to do another album, they're like, oh, we're just going to do it again. And I was like, can you give me more money? And they're like, yeah, easy. I'm like, hell yeah. Love these guys. <laughs> like when somebody wants to like come back for more, 
and like work with me again and also not only give me the same deal but a better one i am a happy happy camper and then they sent me some free stuff i've got some fallujah gear up on my shelf for my like you know for posterity because like i if i'm gonna be like if my stuff's going to be out there like that, it's going to be out on like guitar pick cases and flags and like CD covers and stuff. I want to be able to have that for, you know, 20 years from now when I look back on this like phase of my career and have like all these mementos from that time. And they were perfectly happy to send me over like a goodie bag with a bunch of stuff in it. And that was awesome. And socks. And socks. Yeah, I got Fallujah socks. So I have like officially licensed Angelarium socks, which is super fucking cool. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up really soon. I'm just finding a few areas that I hadn't really touched, and then I am going. Just, to... You're just having too much fun with this. One. I know I'm this having fun with this, but I have other th I have other stuff to do. I've got promises to keep. Not just to other people, but to myself as well. I find those the hardest ones to keep, honestly. Yeah, that's where the real discipline comes in. How do you not let yourself down a little bit every single day? Oh, you know what I didn't do today that I absolutely wanted to do? I didn't get to the gym mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to go today because kids are home. But tomorrow. Yeah, it's a weird day with the kids are home from, from school for Labor Day. So I might, that might be my thing I do after this is I might go to the gym, do a uh, poll day. It's a poll day. Sunday they're going to be old enough to leave them home in the next time of year. Yeah, well, we're going to be nervous. Right now we're nervous of leaving at home because they're, they're little. But someday we're going to be nervous leaving them at home because they're big. <laughs> True. You know? So what can they do in like, you know, an hour? I don't know. I meant when they're big. I'm not going to leave them now. No, that's what I mean. It's like, I'm sure they'll find some sort of way of getting with two teenagers in the house. They'll find some creative way of getting into an enormous amount of mischief over the course of an hour. I'm certain it's I possible. would foresee them just playing games for an hour, honestly. I mean, at the moment, yeah. Like, <laughs> As teenagers, too. Yeah, maybe. All right. Um, I don't like the way that the background wraps around this heel here. I don't have a good view on the heel because of this TikTok. I'm I don't know whose fucking handle this is, but this this photo shoot I guarantee predates TikTok by many many years. So the idea that it's like on there, like maybe it's the original model and their TikTok now, or maybe the that photographer and it's their TikTok now. But I get the sense. I would guess not. I don't know why. I'm just being cynical, but I think it's probably somebody else's, some other random person's TikTok. Paint the handle in too? No. <laughs> hey, Cinderi. All right. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I think so. What number is it for you? Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a shadow from the hair being cast across the shoulder. This is number 59, I think. Wow. Yeah, Jake just hit 100. Oh, wow. That's, that's great. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. So I, I'm saying it's only a matter of time before I hit 100, too. I'm gonna add a little bit of a core shadow here before I call it. Give it a little bit of that extra core shadow magic. You know, it's kind of funny. Hmm. So we 
lived with each other for so many years. Yes. And um, I feel like I'm now painting with you, finally. For again. the first time. <laughs> we never did a lot of crafts together or like work together. I did it with a lot of other people. I don't know why it went not with you. Like I, I can count it with my fingers how many times we like painted together. And now everybody can come and paint with me. Oh, I didn't do this hand at all. I should do this hand a little bit. Wow, that's a new noise. Wow. That is a new noise. I wonder how much that's picking up on the mic. <laughs> a lot. Was, was that a, a saxophone? Yeah, they, they're finally getting that saxophone out of the walls that's been bothering us for the last few years. <laughs> a big problem down here in florida <laughs> yeah as a saxophonist who grew up in florida i can agree with this yeah can confirm once you get a saxophone in your walls it's really tough to get them out <laughs> yeah true i think i finished my thing too Did your voice cut out or are you just quiet? I'm just quiet. I'm concentrating. I'm trying to finish this. I want to be done. I want to finish it. And I want it to also look really, really good. I want it to look amazing. Mm. I want people to look at it and go like, look at the subtleties. Man. <laughs> the, what's the American Psycho quote? The subtle thickness of it. Oh my God. It's even got a watermark. Mm. I want the Patrick Bateman of Twitter to like look at my post and go like, and just like lose her fucking mind. I want to get, not only does it like look good broadly, I want it to like somebody who like is looking at the subtleties of it to go like, fuck, with that extra mile. But not really, I don't know. I'm happy with it. Um, I'm happy with it today and it's getting saved for the first time, Let's see. Huckleberry. But it's same time. First time. That's brave. That's how it typically goes with these. Is like, you know, I work on it for a couple hours and then I hit the hit control S and it brings up a fresh dialogue and I go, uh oh. <laughs> I, I seem to have forgotten to save it the entire time. All right. And then control alt shift S to bring out the save as dialogue because I always save out my JPEGs using save for web. Um, finish studies. 59. And now I'm going to post it on the dailies and I'm going to post it on the, on my sketchbook too. I don't think this one counts as a daily for me. Yep. They all count. No, I meant like I didn't do it in a day. Oh. A lot of people are treating the dailies like they're like, I did this much progress today, and then they did another, and then they make progress on the same piece, and like that's my daily for tomorrow. Well, I, I think this would be cheating. I'll just post it in my sketchbook. I'm very, I'm, I feel like bit by bit, daily by daily, I'm crawling towards like the style that I was aiming at the whole time. I feel like today like marks like a pretty good. I feel like when I've started with a drawing, like with this one too, I had like mm -hmm. an easier time creating the kind of rendering that I wanted. Oh. This one's pretty rad, Pete. I like it, I dig it. Did like the pose was exactly the sort of thing I wanted to do. And like, I don't know, I feel like I'm, it's like, as I'm getting through these dailies and I'm getting more confident with them, I'm slow. They are slowly stylizing a little bit into my style and not being their own kind of separate style, which is exactly what I want. Like, and so like, it's not a hundred percent of the way there. I'm not like, Oh, this is it. I'm like a genius now, but I do feel like 
if I can keep down this path and I can continue to make these progressions, like uh, whether it's number 100 or, or 300 or 500, that like I'm going to have like a feeling of mastery over the process that I'm working in right now. And it's like, even for me already knowing a lot of art fundamentals, like it's still, I'm anticipating it's going to take at least a hundred repetitions, if not more. Um, I, I know like in some ways I learned pretty fast, but like my experience with something like a Souls game or like I was playing Armored Core, I like, I feel like I just need to die. I die on bosses more than the average person. Like I'll eventually get to the point where I can do like really hard stuff in games, but I just like, I iterate slower. And um, I don't think that's something I'm necessarily gonna ever correct, but I, I'm like comfortable just putting in a lot of reps. Um, so I'm hoping that that'll get me to where I wanna go if, if I can just like put in the appropriate reps to be able to get there. I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should do a little soft light on the top to like add a little maybe bonus glow to this. A little bonus glow. It's a little focus, a little extra layer of color subtlety to it. adds a little like glowy edge that like breaks up like you can still have the hard edge but you can still have the glow overlapping it a little bit too much not enough I'm gonna, yeah, there we go. Okay, now I'm calling it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm, I have a weakness to those last minute touches. Uh, and I'm gonna dump it out of the dailies and re-upload it. Because <laughs> I'm allowed to, there we go. All right, now it's done. Now I'm gonna do it on my sketchbook. Where is it? Where's my sketchbook? There's so many of them now. Is mine buried? Am I, am I just dumb? There, there we are. Okay. All right. Now it's all uploaded everywhere. Um, uh, there was some maybe announcements that I was thinking about doing. Oh, yeah. There's like a Huckleberry like Twitter and Instagram now. Uh, the handle is Huckleberry, uh, Huckleberry Art or Huck Art Academy on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Huck Art Academy is like an account or accounts that I'm going to use to not only like send out reminders about when I'm going live uh, or like I actually want to at some point start to get more people who are going live under the Huckleberry brand. And so like we can talk about them going live too. Um, any kind of announcements having to do with like courses opening up, I wanna do things that are high, talk about like the weekly challenge or highlighting community members that have just had like um, like milestones. And you can see some examples of the kind of stuff like, hey, talking about Drawtober's coming up. Uh, Jake Posh just finished 100 stories. Uh, uh, Jazz Mataz, who turns out his real name is Neil Gray. Um, it had like this piece that like is absolutely blowing up on Twitter and it's awesome to see. He's just finally growing his Twitter for the first time. And it's like, it, the response to it has been overwhelming. It's great to celebrate that. Uh, bragging about how Sarah is sending everybody a bunch of free stuff for participating in last week's challenge. Things like that. Uh, I'm gonna be, we're gonna be posting that across, like Dustin and I are gonna be splitting up responsibilities, sort of post about that kind of stuff on Twitter, on Instagram. So if that's the kind of stuff you wanna keep track of and you don't wanna rely on Discord for every single fucking notification in your life, this is like a good way to do it. So go ahead and and seek it out and follow it. And I'm following back the community members. Like there's plenty of people I'm finding who are following right now. And um, uh, I'm just like following them back so that I can have a feed 
on this account that is getting to see what all you guys are up to also, which is an added benefit of, uh, uh, of doing this. Oh, and look, here, Asperger's uh, is uh, trending. I wonder why that is. Anyways, uh, thanks everyone for joining me. We're gonna, we're gonna raid someone right now and call it a day. Uh, Dustin was giving me a link earlier. Dork artist. Um, I'm gonna bring that up in a separate window. Oh fuck! What the? What the? F give me a, give me a goddamn break, <laughs> Twitch. What did you do? I don't know. <laughs> I just did it wrong. Okay. We made it time for that. All right. Uh, that looks like they are really good at art and are doing up to some cool ass shit here. So uh, let's go and hit them. Mm, raid dork artist. All right, looks like we're we're set. Focus stream, no mic, whatever. Some weird advertisement. Yeah, weird advertising for two K. Man, this shit looks really good. All right. I'll be back tomorrow, but I will see you guys on the other side. Goodbye. All right. There. Stop the stream.